Welcome back to Constantly Calibrating. I'm here to host you this week, and my name is Brad. Uh, with me this week, I have Ryan, Josh, and Justin. Guys, what's up? Hello, hello, hello. I have plenty Hi. up, plenty up, plenty going, plenty sideways all around. Oh my gosh, what a weekend, right? What a weekend. Tired. I moved a fridge yesterday, or was it the day before? I don't know, man. Like, I had a three day weekend, and it does not feel like it. Like, I didn't know today was Monday. <laughs> we we drove to Virginia for the weekend and just, ugh. I, I love spending time with uh, with Christian's family and everything, but the drive is just so annoying. I can just imagine. I can only imagine. I, I don't want to imagine. So, uh, we are back to normal schedule now. No guests this week. Uh, that might not last very long. <laughs> Pretty sure we actually, we, we have a tentative guest scheduled for next week. So. People like us. <laughs> so uh, And we but- actually do have a guest scheduled for the following week. Right. So uh, tonight it's uh, kind of a free for all. Bring your own topic. We're going to be doing some more of these. Uh, we've done it a little bit in the past couple months, and we're enjoying it. So uh, tonight on the docket we have uh, Phoenix Comic Con. We have pyramid schemes, uh, complaining about streaming, and something about kind of funny. You just we don't said so- something kind of funny, and that would have been a pun almost. That almost <laughs> we got something kind of funny coming up. I'm sleepy and I don't want to get people so upset, you know. I'm dopey. All right, that's fine. Thanks for going through the syllabus. <laughs> Greatly appreciated. Syllabi. Syllabi. Syllabus. Anyway, slapadoo. Anyway, Sounds our like showing? yeah, our stream is definitely showing. Uh, yes, syllabus. This kind of sounds like so, an erection does, drug. It, this it past weekend, weird. uh. Josh had the uh, distinct privilege and pleasure of attending Phoenix Comic Con for yet Both again. Very distinct. It, it was distinct. There was pleasure uh, in, in in variable amounts. <laughs> A really hot poison ivy. And you're white, so you have privilege. I is that how do we finish? Whoa! That? <laughs> <laughs> whoa! 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 whoa. My, uh, my, well, my audio is too loud. I'm noticing. We finished. We we used every other adjective. I had to fill it in. What do you want? No, no, no. You're you're fine. Probably, <laughs> sort of, maybe. I don't know. That's Can you repeat the question? I am fine. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Do you know how many? So I, I, our good friend uh, Cutright uh, does this thing on a podcast where he does this, meaning Josh is being particularly gay that evening. Um, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that may as well have been he, he that may have well been his cosplay whenever we were around each other. But he, he did call me his boyfriend. This? He did introduce me to someone as his boyfriend, so you know I'll take it. Wow, but wait, I forgot to grab water. This is something that popped <laughs> up in my water. mind right now on our pod, live podcast. So, so you can go get water. You, 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 I don't know something. Anyways, I, I yeah, I'm not to, needed here. I'll I get have to attend to the clear for a month. I'm not needed so. here. So, uh, so how was it? Was it so, uh, everything so, oh, you dreamed of and more? So, okay, overall, <laughs> it, it's it's known that I tend to be a little bit uh, not so much negative, but I I have a my feedback dramatic bitchy. Um, I can go on. Go continue. Well, my com- Josh. My commentary experiences <laughs> for Phoenix Comic Con is I tend to have a lot of negative thoughts. I try to be constructive in my criticism, but every year something happens. This year has been the year of controversy that we've kind of alluded to a little. We actually, I think we may have talked about it a little bit. It's been controversy going on for seven months. Uh, so tensions were kind of high. This was the Phoenix Comic Con that they really had to like stick the landing on because uh, there were questions about the volunteer staff and questions about paying staff and questions about people being banned and all of this other drama, regardless of what side of the equation you're on. And then uh, Thursday, preview day, um, a guy walks into the convention center with uh, a, a duffel bag that has a shotgun and three pistols in it with the intent oh. of killing Jason David Frank, the original Green Ranger. Wow, I mean, I, he was better as the White Ranger, but th- there's not, no I question that about far. it. But the the guy was up, uh, yeah, mentally. I don't remember a, him as a Black Ranger. No, well, why would no? He? It was a Gold Ranger. Whoever knows? I don't know. He's Jason like every other was, color Ranger. He's red at one point. Jason was the Gold Ranger at one point. I forget. He's had like every color, but uh yeah, no, actually, at this point, he really has. So, so, so he comes in and basically Walker Texas Ranger is like, uh, uh-uh, uh, no. Well, no, so, so the, guy, the guy comes in, and he even has, apparently he was posting pictures on Facebook, because he was in there for a while, pictures of different police officers who, um, I don't remember this specific term, but the guy believed he was the Punisher and believed these police officers were corrupt, uh, and things like that. So he was going to kill Jason David Frank, and then take down these corrupt police officers, and, like, literally the goal was to go out in a hail of gunfire. 
because Jason David Frank is the most corrupt person in the world. Come on, man. Well, apparently... Martial he, arts. Apparently... Is he, is he kingpin? <laughs> apparently, he believed his He's claim was... He's in was that, no, his belief was that <laughs> he had stabbed Jason David Frank 15 years earlier, and he was coming to finish the job. What? Why? Did he really stab Jason David Frank? No, well, earlier? Jason David Frank did a, a completely needless press conference. I don't know why the hell it really happened, where he was just like, I, I think his response was something akin to, I'm pretty sure I'd remember being stabbed. Yeah. So, did he use a dragon dagger? <laughs> exactly. So in any case, uh, starting Friday, they uh, they put an extre- almost kind of extreme... Uh, uh, direction on things. Uh, the police department, the Phoenix Convention Center, and Phoenix Comic Con came together to ban props. It initially was literally anything that qualified as a prop. Masks, wands, all these things. Before enough complaints came through from people like, what am I going to do with a fucking wand from Harry Potter? Like, you know what <laughs> I mean? You might like, be surprised. But I, no, they're... Over. But, like, what... But so, like, all all these different things, and it just kind of boiled down to that, so... um. Swords got banned. Anything looks like a gun got banned. Guns got banned. Um, foam weapons got banned. It, there's a wide I, I, list you could find online. Do need to point something out. Make it fun of David David J. For, oh, damn, I can't even say his name straight right now. But I'd Tommy. be very sad if Just something happened to Tommy. him. Yeah, we all know we'd be sad if something happened to Tommy. So I just want to get that out there. Oh, Wish no, him no I, harm. I'm very happy. <laughs> Guys, all lovely. The, all the mocking, I don't know. Why would uh, have to, he would kick everybody's ass. Like, if the guy would have gotten through, he would have... Oh, he'll, he'll just call Saba down and let the sword <laughs> tiger do the thing. But... But, uh, but I don't even know where to go with that. So anyways, no, no, obviously don't wish any harm. And like not we're literally not trying to make fun of what was almost a, tra- a massive fucking tragedy. Like, like let's be been. clear here. There is no mocking of this. Uh, what I'm going to mock a little bit is how the prop ban went into effect. Because so it was botched. Like anyone you talk to who works with Phoenix Comic Con admits it was botched. Uh, people were waiting three, up to, I think the max time up to three hours to get their badge slash get into the building. Waiting outside the Phoenix Sun, um, I've read stories of kids and elderly people having to be taken to uh, hospitals and stuff. I've not really read accredited sources on things, but like stuff like that, like people getting heat stroke because uh, they were not prepared for it. Um, Saturday and Sunday were better, but my annoyance in this thing is two things. One, this was taking so long because they did bag checks. They did not have a security force capable of doing bag checks in that fashion. Uh, the bag checks stopped at noon every day. Because, of what? course, as we know, assassination attempts do not happen after 12 p.m. No, everybody goes to lunch, clearly. Too full well, for lunch. Yeah. So that so there were a lot of issues that, and then on top of that, uh, the bag checks weren't thorough. Uh, my friend Christina, which, you know, was men- who, who was mentioned at the top of the show, uh, she just literally just, she walked in, never even got on the line, because she, she was half paying attention. She just walked right into the building. <laughs> she was not stopped till she got inside when she where a security guard said can i do a bag check and i need to do a bag check ma'am and the uh, the female um uh, security guard with him looked her over and said and looked at her and realized like she's wearing this tight poison I- ivy outfit and her bag is like this minuscule little thing is like just go like where are you gonna be <laughs> hiding stuff great security there let me tell you because that's not phenomenal but you know so um and then there's that and then i uh, had my I, have this, I just noticed there's a bunch of tape all over my floor uh, that my foot got stuck to. But then my final like ranting thing before you guys can ask questions in this or I can move on is uh, I walked in with my giant camera bag and my new my new Mass Effect backpack, which used to sit right over here because uh, I discovered that's way more comfortable to carry at an event. They checked the camera bag, said, oh, that's a nice camera. I said, thank you. And then they said, okay, move along. And I li- I literally said, wait, I have another bag. You may not be able to see it. It's on my back because it was blending in with my shirt. Do you want to check that? And the guy just looked at, looked and said, eh. Literally said, eh, and pushed me forward. And I'm like, nice. Here's the I thing. Mean, I, had a, I had what could be, I had two things in that bag that could be used as a weapon. I had a heavy-duty dry pod and a water bottle. For reference, water bottles were not allowed into the event unless they were sealed. So I had contraband on hand. And, like, potentially speaking, I was media, so the tripod was allowed, but still, like, terrible fucking idiocy of this. So, anyways, that, that sure. rant. Shh. I, have, I have another rant about the prop ban, but that's part of another story. Hello, Danny. <laughs> so, so ask, ask me questions about good stuff, bad stuff, uh, so, controversies, whatever. <clears throat> I'm just trying to remember, like, how, how thorough 
the bag check was when we were at BlizzCon a couple years ago. I, I mean, it was it was pretty good, but I didn't they kind of seem to to lax off later in the day. Yeah, they didn't check anything later on in the day, so I think that's kind of typical. Yeah. yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't know. Um, like, everybody's here enjoying Blizzard. We don't need to check anymore. Well, yeah, like, well, like, all the stuff for that stuff, I'm sure it's all third-party stuff. I'm sure it's, you know, the at BlizzCon, they weren't hired by, uh, they weren't in Blizzard employees doing the security. And I'm sure at Phoenix Comic Con, it wasn't, you know, somebody from the Phoenix Comic Con team. And so I imagine it's probably just some kind of weird communication that went on. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's, it's also last minute, especially after, you know, the shit show with the, with the Frank Castle making his appearance. <laughs> um, so I, it does not at all seem weird to me that they would, that they would not have their shit together as far as, uh, you know, like a set plan. So I am totally 100% in agreement on that. Um, despite the annoyances of it, I totally get that. And I've talked to friends who work on a sort of different teams through, I think it's Comic Con. They're like, yeah, we were backed up against the wall. My only reason I don't accept the security thing is because. People like myself and others have been complaining about the security of Phoenix Comic Con for years. I've been complaining since 2013. This is my fifth Phoenix Comic Con. Uh, I know people who have been complaining since about 2011, 2012, stating, like, this is what's going to go wrong. I know a person who used to work in security who literally wrote up, like, a document on every problem with it and sent it to Phoenix Phoenix Comic Con, uh, specifically Square Egg, who runs the event, and sent it to uh, the Phoenix Convention Center because it's, you know, it's it's a joint thing how can securities run like detailing a cost effective way that they could boost security. So, and if, so like a shooting doesn't happen or something of that nature. And of course it went, it fell on deaf ears and, and then the other times people complained and like, and, and mentioned things. Cause this is not the first year I've seen a real, I didn't, I wasn't there Thursday. So I didn't see the guns for this event, but it's not the first time I could have seen a gun at the event because I've reported the security, a person wandering around with a very, very blatantly real pistol on their hip, just wandering around uh, the um, what used to be the ballroom. Like, there was somebody going to see, see a panel, and they had an actual gun on hand, very obviously an actual gun, and I pointed out the security. And they got took the guy out right then, but, like, why was he in there? Right. Like, I can totally understand banning that kind of thing. If you have somebody walking around with a realistic pistol or a realistic shotgun or realistic grenades or a something katana that, right yeah something that you could seriously do some harm with that i can i can totally understand the thing that blew my mind with this was seeing that people couldn't bring in lightsabers people couldn't bring in the harry potter wands it's like what are they gonna do use the force well again <laughs> are like, they gonna well, then they don't need the lightsaber i'm just saying I'm, use I'm the curse around. of death I'm walking around with this fucking camera. Do you know what damage I could do to someone if I swung this at them? I do because I accidentally hit a small child with it during the event. And that kid went down <laughs> like a fucking sack of potatoes. No, I. it was hanging on my chest. And the kid uh, got excited to see a, co- a cosplayer that I was standing by ran. And I happened to be turning to take a picture. And went boom. Kid was fine. Made sure it was all right. But I knocked that kid to the ground. And took a picture. <clears throat> <laughs> so, um, and the answer to Dan's question, I have no idea what security stuff is like at San Diego Comic Con. From what I understand, the only conventions I've heard that actually ha- make people feel safe was like, um, somebody was talking about the recent Star Wars celebration. But in general, conventions don't have good security. Um, the only other, like, I, I think RTX typically has good stuff, uh, good security. I think, the- but I think that's on the Austin Convention Center. Uh, they don't really do he- heavy bag checks and things of that nature, but they've been. I, I've never felt unsafe being there. Um, and I would mostly say the same thing for PAX, though their, their, their security is non-existent, I feel like. Um, what was I going to say? Though, though, speaking of like bringing lightsabers in, so this company called Ultra Sabers uh, was told about the prop ban. They were asked to, like everyone else, to take part in a meeting to discuss how they were going to handle selling of weapons. They make lightsabers. Um, I've, I've bought Brad and I used, I've discussed them on the show before because I bought a lightsaber from them, which back before they were actually like had quality. So it's a glorified fucking flashlight too. So they, um, didn't go, go to the meeting. Uh, that seems to be confirmed by both sides. Um, and then 
Phoenix Comic Con's claiming that they did not abide by the policy to sell stuff. They're claiming they did, and people who, their booth uh, neighbors and stuff like that, are saying that it was a 50 50. What they were required to do was they sell their lightsabers in pretty much a trash bag. And what? they were too proud to do it, is what Phoenix Comic Con's saying. Anyways, things came to blows. Uh, almost, almost came to blows, but like a, a, a screaming match. Some say it's a screaming match. Some say it was a calm discussion. And they were told to leave. Um, and then their booth was stripped down. They, they left. Uh, that was Friday. Saturday morning, apparently they were walking around. They'd, they'd bought uh, passes and were walking around distributing pamphlets or uh, pa- papers with full uh, their side of the story. And wow. this was at the same wow. time that, and, th- and then shortly afterwards, Phoenix Comic Con, and this was, by the way, uh, the 7th Street parking lot, which is a very large parking lot, um, apparently every single car had these papers just covering them. So, meanwhile, Phoenix Comic Con, after they discovered this and, 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 and did that, uh, and, and took care of, like, getting, uh, finally kicking them out, released the press release the detailing stuff. Now, um... Uh, and they wanted to, yes, as Danny's pointed out, they wanted to refund the event. Phoenix Comic Con's claiming that they, they offered a refund right away. Ultra Sabres is claiming they asked for a refund and were told to get the fuck out. Again, he said, she said, you know, uh, business said, business said, essentially going on here. Um, so, my issues I take with both sides of this is, okay, uh, my issue with Ultra Sabres is I, I've, I've had run-ins with their employees over the years. Uh... I don't think they're particularly nice people, so I can believe a lot of what Phoenix Comic Con's saying about them refusing to abide by rules. Right. Um, and to be fair, their little pamphlet thing they handed out was such a fucking ridiculous, pointless dick move that's not going to gain you business. It'll lose you business. Like, post your shit on your website. It's it's not hard to handle. I'll say, when you said he came out and posted pamphlets, I thought, oh, post them where they can go pick them up if they're interested. But no, like, they're posting pretty much their scripture of their event. That's- uh-huh. Uh-huh. The, their hate, it's a hate-filled rant against Phoenix Comic Con, pretty much. Um, Phoenix Comic Con released a press release that should have been about three sentences, that, and these three sentences were in there, stating what the situation was, and it was resolved. They wrote a fucking manifesto, d- d- dragging them through the mud. I've talked to friends who work friends and friends of friends who work in PR and stuff like that who are like, I would, if I saw this press release come across my de- desk, I would fire this person on the spot for being an idiot. Like, so like I, and we will, I will, I don't have them on hand right now. I will post pictures of this during the, uh, the, the video on demand podcast. Were they protesting outside? Did they have signs that say that God hates dag? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they, they, they did not go to that level. They pretty much left and were, they, they were gone after they put stuff there. Um, it, it 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 was pretty simple at that point. So, um, my only issue I take majors, and this is the last issue thing I have, is so they were told to sell their lightsabers in, in a garbage bag because that way they couldn't hurt somebody. Yes, that was literally what they were fucking that, told. Yeah, yeah because That's, um, because a giant, it because is. a metal hilt and a plastic tube, totally, if you swing it in a plastic bag, it 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 can't connect. Um, I was sold, uh, I bought, Sharnel finally let me buy stuff. I, she bought, let me buy keyblades. Um, and like little foam keyblades. And I got stopped three or four times by security every time I walked in and out of the hall saying, sir, make sure you please keep that in the bag for everyone's safety. What the fuck is it going to do? Oh, you know what it's going to do? If I hit someone with it, it's going to make a satisfying crunch sound. That's what it's gonna it's, fucking do. That's one of those if they have. It's just because they have to say it things, and that's like, you just gotta, I, you yeah. gotta let why? it go. It's so stupid. But or it's, it's one of those that they didn't really clarify exactly what. Hey, what is fi- uh, what is I, something that's harmful? What is something that's not? And plus, they see the keyblade. I guess, and they can't tell. Maybe it's foam, but I guess it clearly is. I don't know. Well, even yeah, it, like, no, it's like anything that's con- literally anything that can be construed as a weapon had to be in a plastic bag. Okay, well, I can see that being construed as a weapon, clearly. No, I can't see the clear blade, so I guess I can't really tell how proppy it looks. No, it, it's a, it doesn't matter. What, what I'm saying is literally anything that's a prop has okay. to be. Everything, literally anything that's a prop, the only things that, uh, the only props that did not have to be in uh, a bag were wands, uh, sonic screwdrivers, uh, dishware, and like one or two other things, I forget. Wait, dishware? <laughs> they specifically listed dishware. 
basically anything that is just soft silicone material away from being like a flashlight. Yeah, it's okay. And, and small. Which I mean, the lightsabers you could totally do that, and that's that is uh that's a Did market. Anybody test what tested, happens if you bring a dildo bat? Where does uh, that cross the line? That Which line actually, does that cross? That was actually banned uh, at most conventions years ago. Just in, okay. as, a, as a generalized ban, most of like the Comic Cons, I believe, put that into effect. And to be clear, pretty understandably for a family event. Yeah, I, I agree. But I can see so, somebody want to push the limits. So, um, enough bitching. Is there something you want, before we go on the other topics, because let me be clear here, I just, I, I still want to see this event be better. I just, I, if they're going to keep this kind of ban stuff in effect, they're going to have some issues. I just, I just want to see boosted security, like an actual boosted security, not just like five guys who don't know what the fuck they're doing. And I'm being told that they're working on it. This was just a panic moment. So I'm fine. I'm cool. Uh, now, so like, other, than, other than the shit shows uh, with the security and everything, how was it? Did you have fun? Did you see anything cool? This was my second favorite Phoenix Comic Con I ever tell went to. Tell Poison Ivy I said, hey. <laughs> I will hey, tell girl. Poison Ivy. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, so yeah. I feel uh, bad because I actually know her, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no. She's a babe. There is no question about it. And that was one very sexy cosplay. You still uh, pass on that hey, girl. <laughs> that that was uh, That's what got my wife to go to her first convention in five years, was her best friend <laughs> being in that cosplay. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> Uh, cause I convinced Charnel to go and thank you to Matthew Renfro of the Social Awkward Podcast, uh, for, uh, donating a pass for us so I can get her in there. Oh, Cause that thanks. was awesome. Uh, for last minute, cause I'd already obviously given out passes. No, but this is my second favorite event. Um, I feel like there was a lot less people. I feel like there was less cosplayers. Um, I'm hearing disagreeing opinions, but overall it was a really good event. The energy was decent. Um, it was great in the exhibition hall, which is like the main, you know, where all the stores are. The Hall of Heroes, which is where the celebrities, the cosplay groups, uh, some the gaming stuff, and some vendors were, felt like an airport. It was, it felt dead. Uh, unless you were talking to a celeb, it felt fucking dead, pretty much. Um... The line to meet Dick Van Dyke was so incredibly insane that there was almost like gang warfare of people fighting uh, wow. with security. Like, it was absurd. Um, I met Karen David, who people might know from the show Gallivant, as Isabella, or she was, I think, Jasmine on Once Upon a Time. Uh, we, Christina wanted to meet her. We ended up chatting with her and having a fun conversation uh, about the future of that show. Uh, tried to go talk to... Uh, uh, what's his name? John Bar- Bar- John Barenthal, uh, the Punisher from uh, the Netflix show. Sure. But they cut off his line. <laughs> they pretty much were like, his line's done. His line's done unless you're buying something. We're like, we are not buying something. Like, please leave. And we're like, okay. <laughs> it was a pretty uh, pretty simple conversation. But uh, yeah, so th- my highlights of the event were uh, uh, two different booths. Our, our friend Wayne uh, from Charge Concepts, who makes. Damn, I don't have an address. Uh, he, uh, uh, we did an interview with him. I did an interview with him last year. They make some of the best battery packs I've ever uh, dealt with. Um, we t- I had a nice conversation with him. He loaned me some stuff to uh, get through the event. And then um, my favorite booth of the event was Hero Within. Hero Within is doing something I've never seen really before. And they really are first of kind. They're doing fashionable, nerdy clothing for men. Okay. And like nice dress shirts that have like like very subtle Batman logos on it. They have a DC license right now, oh. so nice. um, they took like oh the Green Arrow's like green like leather jacket, and it looks like really like nice. They have like formal suits, and one of my favorite pieces, which is actually controversial, is it is a men. And I'll, again, I will show this during the non live show. Um, it is a um. A jean jacket, a kind of slimmer fitting, but with Wonder Woman's logo subtly put into it. And they're getting a lot of shit for it because, uh, from some people, because, well, Wonder, why do you have a men wearing it? Wonder Woman's not a, not a character for men. Uh, wow. But they, I, I watched happen right on the floor. I watched the guy and his girlfriend go over to him. And the girlfriend's like, oh, I love this clothing and stuff like that. You should wear this. And he's like, I don't, like, I was like, I, I, I don't know. And, uh. Uh, Wonder Woman, that's not like a guy thing. She literally looks at him and says, um, I wear, I've been wearing Superman and Batman since I was three years old. Why can't you wear Wonder Woman? And he literally Damn. looks at her and he looks at her and just goes, you're right. Like it, it, it literally clicks in his mind. 
Uh, so it's like, okay, like, that's my opinion. Like, and this is some gorgeous stuff. Uh, they, so I have an interview with Tony B. Kim of the site going <clears> up. Uh, I was in the process of editing that when the show went live, have, so it should be up Tuesday. Have you linked this stuff in our, our private chat before? Because I think I've seen it. I really liked it. I may have linked it. What's really, I, I may have, I don't remember, honestly. What's really cool about their stuff, though, is like the dress shirts are like only like 45 bucks, which is for dress shirts, not that bad. Um, no, that's actually very good. And I'm curious as to what it's made out of. Though, for that it's much. it's soft. The material is very nice. Like it feels like quality. Um, and it's a short sleeve dress shirt in this case. Um, mm. And their stuff goes up to like two something. Uh, the Wonder Woman je- jean jacket was like 129, I want to say, which again, for like a nice licensed jean jacket, it's. Not a bad price. Not I'm, like, I'm gonna personally spend them, but it's it's not bad. And it looked really cool. So that was probably my favorite booth of the event. Um, and then I think that's pretty much it. There's some great cosplay. Um, I'm, I can't sadly show it during the podcast because that was apparently lagging the shit out of the podcast for the live show. Um, but you can go to our facebookcom slash calibrating. I have a lot of great pictures. Some awesome cosplayers. Uh, my favorite that I can't show uh, was uh, there was Winter Soldier, Summer Soldier, and and Spring Soldier. And it was three sisters who were all dressed <laughs> in, in that. And it, it awesome. Apparently, they were trying to convince their, bro- their brother to come along and be Fall Soldier. And anytime anyone asked Fall Soldier, they were just going to shove his ass to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, that, I love it. So that, that, that's my... I, I've talked way too long with Phoenix Comic Con. No, that's, uh, that's fine. So this, is, this isn't on, uh, on our ghetto dock or anything like that. But uh, talking about Wonder Woman... Did anybody else see what was going on with the Wonder Woman screaming screenings that they're doing? The Alamo Draft are, House stuff? Yeah, yep. that are solely for females. How do you guys feel about that? Mm. Someone else gave, someone else a has a thought. <laughs> I mean... I My feelings on it, but I don't people see a are losing... Yeah, be, well, people are losing their minds over something that's not that big of a deal. Like, everybody is wanting to you know, call, call sexism and this, that, and the other for, for it. And it's, it's stupid. It doesn't matter. Like there's plenty of things out there that only guys will want to go to. There's plenty of things out there that only girls will want to go to. Um, you know, there's plenty of co-ed things. Uh, but this, I, like, I, I think everybody's that, making a big deal for no reason. I mean, I can see like people who are like just really like huge DC fans having a big deal about it, but I've seen it as no difference in a ladies night at a bar or something like that. Right. I no, mean, like that's the thing is it's, it's ladies night and there's guys night as well. There's all the, every place you go to has different stuff. I've actually seen movie theaters do uh guys night only showings for, um, for like Rambo. So it's like, I, I, what's I, the big I, fucking deal? Like I'm not in the problem. least bit offended that I, that I can't, that I wouldn't, be able to go to this now. Granted, but, there is so that one, one guy. Show time, you know. Yeah, there's there's there is one guy who got a ticket to it, and people losing their minds because this guy got a thing to it. And while at the same time, I'm like, I don't care that it's an all woman show. At the same time, I'm like, I don't care that there's a guy going to an all woman show. No, you know, it's, again, it's like I don't whatever. see the point of it, but I don't care. Yeah, I don't know. That's I now, mean, that's, it, it, it essentially look at it this way. It was a form of marketing, like it looked. Don't yeah, kid, don't exactly kid yourself. Everything is a form of marketing. Yeah, and definitely. by and by bitching about this, you're just giving more attention to the point that Alamo Draft House was able to open up a second showing of it for all women. To they did it to be to prove a point, but that you drew so much attention that they literally had to open a second <laughs> showing. So by like it's the same thing that happened with Ghostbusters a while back. By bitching about it, you actually made this thing more popular. Like yeah, learn, it's, uh, it's learn like to protest if you really is. hate it. <laughs> Or start what, what, bitching Ryan? about constantly calibrating, so... Exactly. And it's and it's not a big fucking deal. Let people... It's the same thing I've said for years. Let people do enjoy stuff the way they want to enjoy stuff. And if, you know, if women... <laughs> I'm a guy. Like, I don't really have a concept. But if women feel uncomfortable in a situation and want to go have a ladies' night out, all ladies, and see Wonder Woman and feel empowered, more fucking power to them. Like, it sounds awesome. I work in an office full of women. And if they wanted to go on a Thursday and go have their ladies happy hour thing after work, I would totally not be offended if I wasn't invited to it. Cause I mean, we do enough stuff together all the other times that that one time's not going to be a big deal, you know? And I feel like it's the exact same thing with this. Don't make a big deal about, 
you know, people trying to do something or have like a specific group for it, you know? Mm hmm. So I think that boils down to so, okay. Um what else what else we got on the ghetto doc? Uh, <clears throat> pyramid scheme? Yeah, yeah, pyramid schemes. Uh basically with it being Memorial Weekend, everywhere is having a sale. You know, right. our, the the company that I work for is having a sale. Um, you know, we went to we went to a hardware store this weekend because there was a sale, and that's cool. Those are things that I was wanting to go and check out, and I wanted to do. There are so many people out there right now that are doing these multi level marketing things, and they're just so annoying. And the the main offenders that I see all the time. Essential oils, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, nutritional supplements, and uh, cheap, cheap leggings. I guess I don't know. I, I, I don't. Well, I don't see too many of those. I guess because I don't think I fall into their market demographic with it. But uh, when it when it comes to when it comes to all this stuff, it's just so annoying to see it all the time. And you know, with social media, you can go and you can block the people that, you know, you don't want to see it from with everything. But it's gotten to the point where I get personalized messages from people. And I had somebody freak out me the other day because they messaged me like, hey, Ryan, have you heard about this weight loss supplement X? And I was like, first of all, stop sending me these things. This is the <laughs> third one that you sent to me in the past couple months. I didn't respond to the other ones because I was trying to be nice. Second, <laughs> you call me fat? <laughs> Third, no, I don't want this. Leave me alone. If I was interested with it, I would sign up for a newsletter. I would send you a message. I would get in touch with you. You know? Yeah, fair enough. I just, I, I don't know. Uh, pyramid schemes are dumb, and I've gotten in on them a couple times in my life. Um, the only ones I like that pro- actually provide an actual service to some degree, shape, or form, where the pyramid aspect of it is either, uh, m- reduced or it's something that it's a product that actually has some value it's not just trying to hawk you know the latest energy drink or the latest like supplement that'll you know save your life or or make your dick 19 inches and for reference Which i'd be totally no, no, into but no at asu there was a guy who was running a pyramid scheme i think he was literally running it i think it was his thing but you'd see him hawking it all the time and it was a it, was, it had two products it was a pill that made your dick big um, and if you didn't want to have a di- big dick, I'm also selling dildos. That was his speech. <laughs> and I will never forget it as long as I live because it was great. And it was just like so stupid. He got so much damn traffic coming to him. But see, like, that's, that, that's completely different. I worked with a guy and one day he told me, hey, is it okay if I come and hang out with you at this time on this day? Uh, me and my wife at the time were like, yeah, sure. We'll, we'll have some company over. And so he, he shows up. His wife is with him and I, you know, open the door, let them in. And then I'm shutting the door and this other guy puts his hand on the door. And I was like, can I help you? He's like, oh, he's with me. I thought they wanted to come hang out, play some Xbox, eat some chips, joke, shoot the shit, you know? <laughs> no, he sat down and they did a 45 minute presentation on natural organic energy drinks and cleaning <laughs> cleaning supplies for your home. Oh, and I was like, this so guy's my fr- this guy's my friend. So I'm like, Just- I'll listen to what you have to say because you're in my home and I don't want to kick you out. So so, so can I, s- I go ahead. <laughs> go through the entire spiel and at the very end it's like, okay, you know, I'm I'm willing to help my friends out because this is how those marketing people get you. They they get you. It's like you're my friend. You want to help support my business. You want to help do this. You want to help do that and the other. Meanwhile, no one will like my fucking website or my podcast on Facebook. So if you're listening, which I you probably aren't, go do that. Anyways, afterwards, you know, I figured I might help a friend, might get a case of the energy drinks, or at the very least, buy a bottle of the cleaning fluid or whatever. Just be nice. How much is it? Uh, well, you can get six of the energy drinks for seventy nine ninety five, and yep, just stop there. Just stop. Don't care. Thanks for coming over. You guys have a good night, especially you guy I don't know and didn't invite into my home. Yeah, I'm never going to, I, I will, I, I, this is not a joke. This isn't me like saying, like egging you guys on to ask me. I will never disclose how much money Charnel and I spent on Mona V, uh, which was a juice kind of thing. It was 
I, I remember ne- that face. Yeah, Justin, we tried to get you in on that. Yes, I was trying to think. Someone <laughs> tried to get me on a pyramid scheme. I forgot who. It was somebody close to me. It's like, and it almost asked Josh, how many pyramid schemes did you start? And that was one of them that you tried to get me on. Yeah. So I, yeah. Which is I real, did end up which, buying from... Uh, uh, I'm ahead, always reminded of Monavi because there is a person who I don't know if they currently sell or used to sell. That it's emblazoned all over their truck, and I pass it every day when I come home. So, but, does, how well did uh, it work for you, Josh? Um, I made about three hundred dollars. Okay. How about and the how product much did itself? You spend? I spent about three thousand. <laughs> I guess did I was angry, and you know, I and I also didn't go to college for business, still have a freezer full of juice. Up. Wait, what's right? Did, Sorry, we were talking at the same time. Wait, juice or juice? That's like the opposite of something else. Why not both? <laughs> did a juice do anything for you? Um, gave me a fucking sugar high. All right. Yeah. I had something similar where uh, Nikita Koloff, the Russian nightmare, actually was sold me some stuff from a uh, from a pyramid scheme. It was really cool because Nikita Koloff, he came to my church and like he preached at the church I was at at the time. And, you know, I got to hang out with him for a little bit, which, by the way, I shook Nikita Koloff's hand. It was like a bear holding a ping pong ball. And I've, I've got a b- reasonably sized hand, but this man is gigantic. And so he could sell me whatever. And I would gladly pay him if he would just not hurt me. But he, he sold me some, some kind of weird juice stuff too. And, uh, it, it made me very, very sick. And I called him and he was, he's like, no, it's not making you sick. It's it's not. <laughs> it's like why? It, it, I wasn't sick before I took it. It, it. Well, it can't really make you sick. There's not anything in it to make you sick. There's literally nothing in there. <laughs> I was like, yeah. He's like, don't just you know. I'm I'm not gonna you, I'm not gonna sell it to you anymore. You don't have to worry about it. But uh, yeah, I hope you feel better. And uh, if you ever need anything, you call the Russian nightmare. I was like, okay, <laughs> Nikita Koloff. See, that's a great story, though. I mean. <laughs> A ridiculous okay, to one, off. Oh. Uh, and I still have his phone number. <laughs> nice. Is he still alive? He, yeah, yeah, no, he's he's alive. Uh, I thought he apparently. was dead for some reason. That's no, bad. No, no, I'm no, just going to say anything about Dick Uncle, Van Dyke when we're talking about him. <laughs> <laughs> no, un- Uncle Ivan died recently. Oh, yeah, it was Ivan. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. So. Oh. So uh we've been uh we've all been doing a little bit more streaming recently and uh getting into it and you know I've I've had a lot of good things. Does anybody have any bad things to say about streaming, Brad? I don't have it's not bad things. It's it's frustrating realizing how deep this damn rabbit hole get can get. Oh, uh, I went to the Twitch broadcast. Oh, that was actually one of my favorite things. Sorry. I went to the Twitch broadcasting one. Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> There's a reason why I went to. Why is this coming off? Pop. I have my notifications are turned off. Fuck you, phone. Um, so anyways. Sell you some juice. No, but. <laughs> Check your no, but I went, I went to the Twitch broadcasting 101 panel, which was moderated by our buddy Cutright um, and featured a lot of awesome streamers. And one of the questions people asked, somebody asked, was related to. Um, uh, what things do you recommend buying for your stream? And like, they their response was pretty much, "Do you?" Because we have people up here who have anywhere from like who are doing well, who are anywhere from like the most simple setups to people who have like multiple green screens and like camera and 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 and, and, uh, and lighting and cameras and all stuff. Like the things they said, what you spend your money on is audio, and and if you have and if you're using a webcam, lighting. Do not worry about anything else. Only get stuff that pertains to your specific stuff. But you're talking about the rabbit hole, Brad. Let's let's talk about rabbit it's, holes. It's just you know, I thought I was set for a while, and now I'm I'm trying to transition to a little more console streaming because I'm trying to you know play some more games that I didn't really make time for over the past you know, four to five years. And I'm realizing that console streaming is a royal pain in the ass, especially when it's it comes to PS4. Not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it is. It's not. You plug into Legato, it goes to your computer. Okay, and uh, so you're playing a multiplayer game. Okay. How do you get your chat into the stream without having to buy a second uh, microphone? How do you make sure you can hear your chat and your game sound while still listening to the PC 
if you wanted to play music or you have chat notifications, it's there's a lot there. You can set up the PS4 to play through your, uh, actually just through the speakers. Um, you have that running through. Okay, so you have to put today, uh, you have your Elgato hooked to a monitor. Your monitor usually has a audio device on it, right? Like it does, it does not. have audio output. You're just it not. Does not. You are fucked, sir. Um, <laughs> this is uh, yeah. I realize I'm probably like I. It's the problem. I mean, I could purchase. I could be an ass to just say get a PlayStation camera and just use the built-in stuff because it is that easy oh. and it actually is not that bad. Thank you for joining Tech Talk with Constantly Calibrating. I'm your host, Justin Stanley. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, pretty much. But, it's what I've been uh, doing. It's what I've been doing, except for the last month. Um, we just need to send. Uh, we just need to send Justin over to Brad's. In, in, I, in, I insisted. I have a monitor that has audio capabilities if you want it, so you can run the output to a mixer, and then the mixer goes to your head. Well, it's a thing. You want me to come over, Brad? I'll come over. That's I, all I, I say. think I think we need to have a powwow, and uh, it needs to involve uh, me ordering probably a, an Astro mix amp and a monitor with an audio output. Um, I mean... You don't even need that, too. I mean, you can just have it output into a speaker, which I used to have it uh, go to. Like, I'm actually trying to stream without using the headphones. And yeah, I, I would prefer to do that, but, you know, you have to have them if you do it. Like, like okay, I'm going to stream just straight up. It's going to okay. happen. Okay, so yeah, so that you will... have party chat. You still technically don't, as long as you have a decent mixer that, uh, and you have it balanced out, right? Which you can balance out within OBS. So OBS does have uh, mixer capabilities in it where you can balance the gain out where it doesn't pick up the speaker itself. But, like, t- to to your layman, you know, if you have... That'd be me. Put, you know, to, to your layman, I recommend you to. <laughs> but not everything's there, and a lot of it's, it's not explained well, either. Like, there was literally... And everything a dude, is different. True. Everybody explains it a different way, shows you a different way how to do it, and you're not sure which one's the best, which one is technically correct. The best one works, so whatever works for you is the best. I, I've seen everything from using your microphone port on your PC to... I, I don't know, I've seen so many different options, and I'm like, which one well, should I go with? Side yeah. setup you want to go with first. Do you want to do headset or do you want to do not headset? Do you want to have a combination of both? Um, God, there's a lot of stuff you can do. Right now, like, your setup looks like you're good to go. Like, and I can tell you, by the way, having, like, a just bang-out setup, green screen, the best quality equipment does not guarantee viewers. Let me no, stress that out first. But I can attest to that personally. There's a comfort uh, level that you had to have, too. No, like, it, is, it is a personality. I had more streamers with uh, one megabit upload speed with a crappy mic and just like 480p is the most I could produce and I had a bigger audience because I was more into it at the time. Yeah. And it, energy is the biggest thing. Energy and commitment are the biggest things that will get you forward streaming. It, the quality yeah. helps. The quality will certainly help and it will help get you attention quickly. Um, your thumbnail being bright and pretty for how it shows will get you more attention. But the truth of the matter is, yeah, if you can get the crowds in, let's say you're just in Justin's case, he lucked out and got access to a game before most people did. You once you get people in, if you're showing that energy and you're showing that commitment, it your call quality barely matters as long as you're understandable. It doesn't. They were coming to me because like there are other people who had it like the official. I'll just say some official channels. I won't say who, but uh, they're saying like, yeah, they weren't really trying anything. They're kind of dull. It's like you actually seem legitimately enjoying the game, like because I am. And as long as you like what you're doing and you have the energy behind you, and what kind of became my problem is, uh, we all know my like light situation where my work's kind of like. Really sucking my soul. <laughs> but uh, it's like uh, every time I come home, I'm just exhausted. And it's showing in my streams. And I'm not as into it as I used to be because I don't have that energy chair anymore. So, but while like you can have that energy and that can make a huge difference for it, if you don't have a good setup, I don't feel like it's it's fun to watch. Uh, the One of the, the reasons that I'm excited about moving is that I'm going to be able to set up my own little studio space, and you won't see my cluttered apartment behind me, which you know we're, we're, we've decided to stop trying just because we're moving in a couple yeah. of weeks. We're Support. already starting to box stuff up, um, you know. But I, I want to have I want to have my space because if I'm not personally satisfied with like the production quality and what it looks like and what it sounds like, then I 
you know, I don't want somebody else to have to experience something that I wouldn't want to watch, you know, just like with any other content. I want to make stuff that I feel like I would really be interested in, you know? And I mean, I, I got hung up for months on the fact that I was not happy with my art. Just my little square in my top banner, I'm like, I don't like this anymore. I don't feel like it's good enough. And I feel like I can't. Um, Yes, I can't say anything because that's my current situation right now. Yeah, and I mean we're like we're we when we started with the constantly calibrating stuff. Um, even when I was starting, like we we didn't have as decent of production values as we have right now. And I don't want to be below mm-hmm. that certain bar. You know what I mean? I want to if you know, you know not not that the whole point of this is to to be seen by somebody important and then make oh. it big but if we do that'd be great you know <laughs> just saying that'd be that'd be amazing um but i would much rather be confident in what i'm doing for myself and more confident in what we're doing as a team mm-hmm. than to you know just just have the spirit but no no production value which i mean i know you can definitely you can do that but my my no. OCD will not allow that. <laughs> no, you also have a point not too. There are those video files, those audio files. I had people who came into my uh, stream and just straight said potato and left. Uh, and uh, no question. But I mean that yes. I'm just no. I'm just saying no question. Like that's gonna happen. Oh yeah, no question. But, uh, so like there are those people who are like, oh man, you're not 1080p, you're not 60 frames, and just leave because they're stupid. Y'all stupid. I'm sorry. What do you want me not- to say about you? <laughs> Uh, there was no, there definitely case. Uh, Danny's asking us in chat, uh, what are your guys' yes. thoughts on how long streams should be? Ooh, and whatever floats stream, your boat. Streams should be as long as you are comfortable with what you're doing. Mm-hmm. That's if you the best answer point, I can say. If you hit a point where you're tired, you're not enjoying the game, or you feel like you're not putting forth your best you as a streamer, it's when you should stop and take a break. Yeah. Um, Depends what you're streaming too. Like if you have a highly produced show, like I've seen some people do, and they only go for thirty minutes. Hey, that's a thirty minute awesome show you could do. Um, or if you're kind of like a, well, kind of funny who has a morning show they do every hour. Um, not every hour. A <laughs> show An they do every morning. morning. Show. Thank yeah. you. I like I'm so tongue tied right now. Then that's your thing. Um, it really depends what you do, and like Brad said, it depends what you're comfortable with, and never push yourself too far i mean exceptions are 24 hour streams which by the way don't do if you're not prepared for god oh, don't do not say you're going to do it if you're not prepared for it hey, yeah. we're like training for november now yeah no 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 like, like i know that's not even a joke i am training my body to handle that again that's the first thing i realized last when i started streaming black desert hardcore um oh never do four, one by yourself too four, that's a four thing. hours is a whole you're not used to speaking constantly to somebody, nobody, anybody, regardless. While Unless you're, you're me, the game. because I'm insane. But <laughs> but it, no, you know, same thing for that, me too. Like I thrive, and people are like constantly going through my chat. But it does, as Brad say, will take a toll on you. In the moment, you, it's one of those things. Like when you're in the moment, you're good. The moment you stop, though, or the moment is just a break. Well, so the thing, my, my opinion on how long streams are, I agree on everything you guys said, but if you are a person who's, let's say you are comfortable doing an eight-hour stream, these are what you things you have to do no matter what. You have to be prepared for food. You have to be prepared to get up to get food. You have to be drinking water. Drink your yeah. soda, drink your monster, drink your coffee, drink whatever the fuck, but God, drink water. And also, get up. You should get up every 45 minutes to an hour, but yeah, you're into it, you're doing stuff. If you, every two to three hours, get up, walk around, stretch. Make it part of your stream if you don't want to go uh, go be right back. Like make it part of the experience. <laughs> That's and, Ryan's cat just became part of our experience. Exactly, but That's like Arthas. But like make that part of the thing. Like, <laughs> like I don't know if you're. Gonna, let's say you're gonna do. You, you have one day a week to do your eight hour stream. At mm-hmm. every two to three hours, why don't you do the fifteen minute stretch with your audience? Like make that part of the experience. Like that's a, a really cool thing. Um. By you the know, way, two hours, yeah, that's a that's definitely two, a good link. Two hours is the sweet spot. I personally I, think two hours is is for most games the sweet spot, unless you're playing something very specific. Like I, when it when it comes to something, I, I guess in the MMO genre or the 
something similar, you're going to be expected to do a longer stream. Destiny, WoW, um, Diablo, anything that's generally seen as a time consumption game or a grindy game, you're going to be expected to play a lot longer, um, which I've found to be true. I think the longest I did last year was 13 hours with breaks, um, but God, that was rough. And I don't think I ever want to do that again if I can help it. Um, mm-hmm. It just depends so, on how it's going. Yeah. Well, you were mentioning uh, Kind of Funny earlier, and it's kind of funny that you're talking about Kind of Funny, because aren't you going to Kind of Funny Live, Justin? I am going to Kind of Funny Live. Uh, something I never Three. really did think I would do. Yeah, this is the third one. I did go to the second one as well. Uh, had a great time. I see they're definitely toning it back and they're kind of understanding what this show is more. Because last time, um, God, they tried to do like an all-day show, which they successfully did. Um, and then they tried to do that for two days, though. And two day, the second day kind of like fizzled out. Especially because everybody was standing for like eight hours each day. Um, but this one is like, it seems like a more concise show. It's actually technically only one night. Like, at certain at 8 o'clock, I think it's going on for a few hours. And then uh, the second day is going to be, like, a meet and greet for VIP guests. Uh, now, we put on notes, like, something like that. My preparations, I have an empty suitcase behind me. Eventually, I'll put clothes <laughs> in it. That's about as much I, preparation I'm doing. I thought there was a blonde wig behind me. It really does look like a blonde wig in a bag. Oh, yeah, the, uh, I mean, yeah, very possibly. Basically, it's a bunch of hats and stuff. That, that, ignore that. That's moving crap. <laughs> Anyways, uh, but now like Justin a- wants to become Justine. <laughs> yes, it is. You know, when I have the special nights, as you can tell, I'm tired. But now, like, um, I'm really excited for it. I wasn't expecting to go, and it's just one of the things that I just looked. Uh, it's kind of at a weird point in my life. I'm like, ah, screw it. I'm just gonna go, see what happens, have some fun. Uh, I mean, I can afford it. Might as well. So yeah. that's happening. What I'm mostly looking forward to is uh, meeting up with the community, because um, uh, that's a cool thing about the kind of funny live events or just any kind of funny events. Um, the community kind of like sets up the events themselves. Like they don't ask them to do it. Nobody is really heading it, except well, I guess now technically Joey Noel is. Uh, it's just like we kind of all just get together and make events for everybody to have fun, and uh, that's what I'm looking forward to the most. Yeah, I mean, it looks kind of fun, and I mean, the pricing for it's not ridiculous, even if you do, like, the VIP stuff. Are they, are they based out of San Francisco? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Ooh. I mean, if, if you live, su- if if I live super close, I'd I'd go to this for yeah. sure, too, but, you know, those plane tickets can be crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, as far as what to expect in the show, I have no fucking idea, because last year we had Cisco flip on the stage, and we all sung the Pokemon song together with Cisco. So, <laughs> um... <laughs> Well, this year is also hosted by uh, Xavier Woods of the New Day yes, and WWE. Is. Wow. Xavier Woods, Austin Creed, he is hosting the show. Uh, last time was hosted by Bernie, but the fact, like, he... I don't know how he got the time to come out to go do this. Um, But, yeah, so it's going to be interesting. And I I know they had to restructure this thing heavily, because uh, Kind of Funny itself went through a heavy restructure. Um, I do expect Colin to be there, because course why wouldn't you be uh but uh i have no doubt there's some things they had to change because of everything they got uh changed around plus they have new hires and i have no doubt they'll probably possibly have another hire let's see uh but they definitely uh always have it's you <laughs> if only god if, gonna... if, if only we could get that uh that worked out but i wouldn't be just like Tired. Well, I might be tight, tired out right now, but I'm gonna be this low energy if that's the case. Uh, I don't know. Your energy is your energy is perfectly cromulent. Thank you. I'm actually peeling dead skin off my foot because I have ADD oh, or something like that. Oh, oh god. Anyways, let's go oh, back to oh, it. Oh, like it oh, caught my oh, attention, oh, man. Like We're going it. back to it. Oh, no, he's, he's no, eating it. Done. Oh god. Sh- show's done. Show's done. <laughs> no, do you have any uh, final thoughts, Justin, before we go to the uh, so the speaking end? Speaking of eating. <laughs> yeah, J- Josh has dinner already. It actually was finished five minutes ago. So that's okay, <laughs> man. Those flakes aren't salt. Oh, uh, that's okay. You can wash it down with a nice energy drink you have stored in your freezer. Yep, and uh-huh. the show on dead skin eating, and we have Chris in the chat saying, "Prove it." You know, Chris, go back to go go back to teenyweenies dot com. We don't need you here. <laughs> and uh, I'm not that sick. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be cool. Not that um, sick. <laughs> I'm glad I'm actually gonna be able to sit this time because VIP does have seats. By the way, um, I seriously doubt he's watching this, but Vincent, shout out for you for uh, selling me your VIP ticket. 
Thanks, guy. <laughs> um, he couldn't go, so he ended up uh, having to sell his tickets, and uh, he's very st- fairly sold them at like face value. So good stuff. That's pretty damn awesome. That's um, how community treats each other. That's why I love the kind of funny community. Like we, tr- they really don't see anybody try to take advantage of each other. Mostly, it's people encouraging each other. Uh, did Did you eat at the wing place last year? Wing wings. Uh, no, I did not. Uh, I'm going to try to this year. I, cause last year it was closed. They have really weird hours. I actually, <laughs> I went on a San Francisco Odyssey cause that is where we wanted to go. Didn't work. We tried to go to another place. Didn't work. Then somebody said they're like, uh, Grindcraft was hosting a party. Uh, then we got there. There's a bunch of furries and people dressed like Naruto. <laughs> Didn't go to that. And I was in the tenderloin. <laughs> uh, so we walked all around and ended up at a, um, get together in a hotel lobby. And that's where Greg Miller, uh, play the ultimate wingman for somebody. Told him, told everybody that he was the kind of funny CEO. Just to try to get him laid that night. Wow, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Like he didn't tell any guys. He told that he told them on the show the next day. It's like, oh yeah, it's like I totally told uh, everybody. Like this guy's our CEO. that's i mean that's phenomenal it's slightly evil but goddamn everybody was in on it it's the thing like everybody came together to get this guy laid (laughs) god greg miller is like the nicest evil genius in the world and like the the most like the most respectable uh, evil genius that's also where i accidentally stole a glass from the hotel yeah (laughs) yeah because i accidentally i was drunk and i was talking to greg miller and i had this glass i had nowhere to put it so i put it in my pocket and i forgot it was there (laughs) but i don't think i've ever been drunk enough to know that i did not have a glass in my pocket (laughs) well i was drunk enough not to know i had a glass in my pocket um but speaking of greg miller too like there's even times like um everybody wanted his attention there but if you actually looked off sometimes you'll actually be sitting one-on-one with somebody that you could tell was having a hard time you'll have like a heart to heart with him and uh, he tried to take some time for myself as well, but he's, I mean, the dude's awesome. He tries his best to try to give everybody the attention that he, belie- like, he believes everybody deserves the attention. He tries his best to give it to everybody he can. And then he always picks one, like, special people, like, getting a guy laid that he'll put every attention on. <laughs> Which I enjoy. Well, you know, maybe you'll be the special attention person this year, Justin. I Hey-oh. doubt it, but we'll see. Wow, well, but I was saying, so, but... Uh, you'll give us uh, your your report on kind of funny life three. I'm expecting aftermath. To have some fun, so. uh, when yeah. do you actually come? When are you coming back from? Are you going to be back for next week's show or not? <laughs> I will be back Monday. So yeah. All right. So then on Monday, uh, including what are is going to be our in- interesting topic if it actually falls through. Oh, not falls through. If it falls into place, uh, Justin will be giving us uh, some feedback on kind of funny life three. But yep. uh, and uh, that's also going to be our E three show or that'll be three three. That's pre-three. gonna be pre- that's gonna be pre three, and it's also gonna be if our guest is on, we're gonna have pretty much our main topics are gonna be pre three. Um, it's gonna be uh, guest discussion and kind of funny live three aftermath. So those are our three uh, currently planned things. Uh, I got one more thing I forgot to mention. The thing is Comic Con thing. Um, just because Ryan and Justin keep bringing up Poison Ivy or, or kept bringing her up, uh, the, uh, Christina uh, has convinced Charnel and I to cosplay next year. Nice. Um, alongside possibly uh, uh, someone uh, Brad and I know, John and his wife, we oh. we might form a cosplay group. And all Dude, I'm gonna buy me a the, ticket. The I'm there. Ol- okay. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna get unless they throw us out. I will probably have passes for it. So, uh, the only thing, the only hint I'm giving is, um, someone's gonna be dressed as Captain America. And I'm not saying who. Oh my god, Josh, I'm totally in. Totally okay. in. Yeah, it's, no, so we're, we're we're doing a oh, we're doing a Marvel now. one. Um, I mean, let's get over it. I'll be there by then, anyways, probably if I'm prob- not somewhere else. <laughs> There's a pretty good chance. So, uh, Justin, I will fill you in privately about it because I do not want to discuss it until I'm trying to convince everyone we need to make these costumes on Creative Stream. So, I agree. Uh, I will. I, I'll have more details on that in the coming months. Uh, oh, can I do the uh, bread for the outro? Can I do the uh, what our Twitch shows? Since I'm the only one who actually probably remembers when they are. Yeah, but uh, I just wanted to mention the uh, uh, fact that uh, TeenyWeenies.com is the best in the market. Mm-hmm. Well, they 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 stack the weenies up in a pyramid, and then you see how many fit inside. <laughs> oh. Of what? <laughs> only paid members know. Only paid members, yeah. You have these silver level members, though. 
None of those bronze, you know, people. They 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 don't get that. They don't get that pleasure. I'm crystal level. You're crystal. Ooh my! Not a founder. <laughs> I'm also a member. Would you, I, I'm not, I'm not just a founder. I'm not. No, I'm not just a founder. I'm also a member. Would you like to see my member? It's teeny. Uh... Anyway, so anyways. Uh, Twitch shows that we're doing right now. We were talking about different things. So, uh, so Constant Calibring does obviously this podcast, 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern on Monday nights. We do, uh, I do the Wednesday night, whatever the fuck Josh thinks the stream lit in the middle of the night, uh, 10 p.m. Pacific, 1 a.m. showing. Uh, then we have our brand new show, which was fucking awesome. My favorite thing to do, uh, the Mental Health Breakdown. Uh, Fridays around 5 p.m. Pacific. Don't so have this at time. It's literally when I get home from work. Um, and it's me talking about mental health issues of of mine, and there are plenty. Trust me, I have like the next nineteen episodes figured out already to a loose extent, <laughs> um, and I'm sure more stuff will come up. So, and then uh, going to be possibly having uh, other people hosting that as well. We're just trying to. I, I'm trying to lay down the structure first. Um, We're all a little batshit, so we can all say something. We can share our crazy you are right. ass minds. You are I think right. I'm undiagnosed. <laughs> yeah there right you go there. We're, we're all diagnosed so we're official we can diagnose you exactly so um, i think i have rage it's like facebook only a <laughs> diagnose can diagnose somebody else but but in any case in any case um as ryan said it'll be added to the proper schedule soon um and then saturday and sunday morning there is the the morning streams uh 8 a.m pacific 11 a.m eastern uh sundays i think are gonna very likely be myself and ryan doing stuff uh we're gonna try to fit more stuff in but i think this sunday is gonna be uh uh, PUBG, uh, possibly with Justin. PUBG. Uh, PUBG, uh, Player Unknown Battlegrounds. And I'm trying to convince these two lovely gentlemen to do role playing characters with it in it with me. Okay. So <laughs> if, if we're going to role play the cowards that are hiding in the bathroom, I think we'll do just fine. Can you be a. Yes. 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 <laughs> Brad, that okay. is a Brad. weird smile. Okay, so Daddy's anyways. coming to get you, boys! Oh, God. If you could maintain that for an entire fucking Battleground thing, please do. <laughs> I mean, if you're trying to say, you know, if he can maintain it for the whole time we're playing, then, I mean, he's only got to do it in, like, three-minute bursts. True enough, true enough, yeah. <laughs> but true. he has to actually, like, be sc- Anyways, so what we're, we're going to be doing... Uh, we're, we're, <laughs> he's going to splat on the parachute opening. <laughs> we're going to... Very much so. Well, I don't think you can, isn't it? Doesn't automate it? Yeah, it automatically... It'll automatically deploy I've taken... parachute. Because that was the first thing I tried, because I was like, oh I just want to see Morty, if you Oh, my God, Morty, I'm falling! I'm falling! Yeah, but you well, can't you just... land on the roof, then fall off the roof. I have that happen. You don't Morty, think much... Morty, help bat- me get down from here. Well, in any case, uh, so we're going to be doing that probably Sunday morning. Um, and then otherwise, that's it for Twitch. Uh, Brad, if you want to do the rest of the outro. Yeah, yep. So <clears throat> we thank you all for joining us. As always, every week we are here at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific at twitch.tv slash constantly calibrating, which might change. We found the website. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we, found the, we, found, we found the I internet. had it. I had it. <laughs> <laughs> so we. We honest. might change that, but for now we are twitch.tv slash constantly calibrating every week. Uh, you can catch us on Fridays around what time do we put it out? Five. Uh, it goes it goes out about uh, roughly three p.m. Pacific, so six p.m. Eastern. So six p.m. Eastern time, you can find us on podcast form and YouTube. If you missed us on Monday, uh, or if you're really really impatient, uh, we might archive them. I'm not. sure. That often. Uh, our archiving does stay on. I'm probably in the future going to be turning that off uh, for the podcast or deleting the podcasts uh, to draw more attention. But at the, right now, they stay up usually until Friday. Okay. So, uh, other than that, we are at a multitude of places online. You can find us on Twitter at ConCalPod. You can look us up constantly calibrating on Facebook for any notifications when we're doing extra stuff, contests, which we have a couple going on right now. Yeah, we have more. a contest, which I will drop in the chat here just again. Stereo words. Uh, you can find us. Uh, we have Instagram. We have. Oh, my God. I'm looking here. I'm. Oh, my God. I'm terrible. It's right here at the bottom, and I'm ignoring it. YouTube.com slash Uh As well as you can reach any of us individually. If you'd like to say hello, shout out, ask a question. Uh, Justin is at the Aging Gamer. Ryan is at Ride Adia. Josh is at Bear Punch, and I am at OG Zenos. Uh, so, I think that covers it. Remember, we are affiliated now, so if you like us, 
Watch an ad. Give us five bits. Drop, drop some bits all up in there. Drop some bits on them. Beat me! I should not be the top bitter. You probably really shouldn't. I really DM shouldn't. DM your bits. So, uh, we love you all. We thank you for joining us. Again, we'll see you next time. We bid you good sign.